Hey what is up guys, my name is Eric and in today's episode we're going to be covering the topic of pass by value and pass by reference using functions and pointers in C++. Let's do this. Now, a couple of episodes ago, I taught you that you could make functions that receives parameters or values. Not only that, there are two ways to pass in values. The first way is pass by value, which is what everybody who starts programming is familiar with. And the second one is by passing by reference, which uses pointer variables. Now, as I said in the last tutorial, whenever you want to store a memory address or where a variable's data is located, you have to create a pointer variable, which is represented with an asterisk in front of the variable name. Now, what makes the two different from each other, which is passed by value and passed by reference, is the fact that whenever you pass by value for any function, what this means is the program will actually take a copy of the variable's value that you are trying to pass into the function. And then if you do any updates to that incoming variable's value inside the function, then only the copy is actually getting its data changed, not the actual variable that you are passing it in, okay? So what this means is, let's say for instance, we do a function call to pass by value and we pass in the variable age one. So pass by value, and then we type in the variable age one into the parameters. And that's how we do a pass by value function call. And then inside the pass by value, there is a variable inside the parameter called incoming val number, which basically catches the value age one that's being sent to it. Now, again, because this is passed by value inside the computer's memory in the background, the computer is actually making a copy of age one's variables data. Okay. So if we were to update the value of incoming val number, equals 100 and then we see out incoming val number actually let's add some messages in front of it so inside pass by value and then incoming val number we should see the value that's going to be displayed by this see out line of code to be 100 and not 1 so if we were to go back into the main function and after the function call we see out the value of h1 we should see the value of 1 so if we were to compile and run this program you'll see what i mean okay so as you can see in the console window the program first shows inside pass by value is the value of 100 because after all when you pass in a variable of h1 using the method by pass by value it's actually a copy that's being altered so the copy is updated to the value of 100 and then you see out the value that was coming in and that is 100. however once that function is finished and it comes back to the main function it runs another c out which tells you the value of h1's variable and that is as you can see the value of one now what happens if we use pass by reference so in the last tutorial i told you that if you use pointers you can actually mess with the actual data that the pointer is pointing to so in this case if you want to do a pass by reference call, this is what you would do. Type in pass by reference to access the function. And because the parameter is a pointer variable, it's expecting a memory address. So you have to type in ampersand. And then let's say h2 for this example. And then inside the pass by reference, we can access the data by using asterisk incoming reference number equals, and then let's say 200. And then see out inside pass by reference function and then asterisk incoming val actually incoming ref number and lock. and then back into the main function we do the same thing c out h2 h2 end line so now if we were to compile and run this program we should see four lines of code being displayed and as you can see the first two lines were from pass by value the last two lines are from pass by reference and as you can see when the program calls pass by reference and sends in the memory address for h2's variable and then it updates that value to 200 and it displays it as you can see it shows the value 200 however once that function is finished it goes back to the main function and see out the variable h2. Now h2 was originally 2, but because we're doing a pass by reference function call, what we're actually doing is see outing the updated value in h2, which is 200. It's no longer 2 because, as I said before, when you use pointers to point to the actual variable's memory, you can actually change that actual variable's value. Now, 
Just a few notes to clarify some things. Whenever you create your own functions, you do not have to name it pass by value. You do not have to name it pass by reference. You don't have to make it a void. You can make it any data type you want, any function name you want. The only thing you have to just memorize is the fact that if you want to do pass by value, just stick in a variable inside the parameters. And then if you want to do pass by reference, you just stick in a pointer variable. That's basically it. Now, you're probably wondering at this point, okay, if that's the case, what's the benefit between pass by value versus pass by reference? So let's say you're passing in a huge list of data inside the function calls parameters, okay? Then in that case, again, remember, pass by value makes a copy. So what this means is if that is the case, it would slow down the program's performance. However, the main benefit of pass by value is that the original data does not get modified. So if your original data is important, and it should not change no matter what, then you do not want to use pass by reference. However, if the original data can be changed, then you want to use pass by reference for performance purposes. And that basically concludes our tutorial on what's the difference between pass by reference and pass by value in C++. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.